So in this example, um, just like we did before, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to add, and we see that we do not have the same denominators. So we're going to have to get common denominators. Now, just like the last example, we've got to determine the LCD. So when we're adding or subtracting, we have to find the LCD. Well, actually, good point. Um, first thing I want to see, could I factor and simplify anything? And unfortunately, I can't simplify it by factoring anything. So I'm just going to determine the LCD. Now, the LCD in this case, now, if you guys remember, polynomials kind of makes it a little bit more confusing. It's not as obvious what the LCD, what they both divide into, is it? No. So we can always default by then taking the product of our two denominators, right? So I can say my LCD is going to be x minus 7 times x plus 8. And I'll just leave it just like that. Wait, why? Remember I said, what was the LCD of 5 and 4? Of 5 and 4? 20. 5 times 4 was 20, yeah. right? That's not always the case, but that works. So in this case, is it obvious that these divide one of these divide into the other one? No. So therefore, you can just multiply them to obtain your common denominator. So now, what I'm going to do is to get x minus 7, so it's x minus 7 times x minus 8, I'm going to have to multiply it by x plus 8. X plus eight. To get x plus 8 to look like x plus 8 times x minus 7, I have to multiply by x minus 7. What? How do you know the else? I missed it. How do you know the LCD is? Basically, unless you know that they divide into each other or something like that, you're just going to multiply them. Okay. You, you don't know the LCD, so you just write it times this and the other. Right. We'll do an example where it's not going to be the product of them. It's fun when you understand it. Right? There you go. Now, to simplify, we apply a distributive property. Dang, over 2. So 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 8 is a positive 24. All over x plus 8 times x minus 7. 5 times x is a positive 5x. 5 times negative 7 is a negative 35. Over, hold on a second, x plus 8 times x minus 7. Yes? With all this math you're doing, how come you couldn't calculate the trajectory to get into the trash can? I didn't calculate the trajectory. I know the trajectory. My muscle memory was just a little bit off because I'm not very good at <laughs> yeah, basketball. Because you're weak. <sighs> so, yes, I'm very weak. Yes, thank you. I have a question. How do you know whether to like, do it like that or to like how we did it last problem when we found negative oh, 20? Makes you a big or we found the well, now we have polynomials as our denominators. Excuse me, excuse me. Last problem we had poly. This problem we have polynomials as our denominator. Or last problem we had integers. Because you know what five times four is, but you don't know what x plus eight times x minus seven. So you just write. How come you didn't put the x plus eight on that side and x minus seven? Because there's already an x plus eight on the side. Well, I'm not done yet. Not, not done yet. Let him Still waiting. So now, what we simply do is we, since we have common denominators, when you're adding fractions with common denominators, you simply just combine your numerator. So therefore, I have 3x plus 5x and 24 plus a negative 35. So 5x plus 3x is 8x. 24 minus 35 is going to be a negative 11. So that's all divided by x plus 8 times x minus 7. <coughs> What did not make sense? How do you know whether it's Because you have two. You have two. It's big long in the edge plus eight. Right. Just like when you have two fractions. Three over five plus one over five. What do you do? You add three plus one, which gives you four fifths. I know these are more confusing than five, but they're exactly the same. So you just combine them and add the numerator. The, t the numerator oh, is what it's out. Let's say I got one green apple and another green apple. <laughs> I put them together. I got 